Hi guys, I'm gonna show you today something very interesting. Oh wait. Now that's what I'm talking about. My first Mac Mini arm. Well, you know what? It looks exactly like my old Mac Mini. My old Mac Minis, they are running there in my server rack and I cannot disturb them. However, I can put this one on top of it and you will see what I'm talking about. <laughs> they are pretty much the same. The only difference between them is this is the new one, the LED is here and on the old one the LED is on the upper side and the old one has the infrared receiver. The new one doesn't have remote control. For those who are new in <laughs> In Apple products, uh, old devices, even laptops had remote controls, you were able to change music and whatever. And of course the ports, in the back the ports are different. Back to our table, we have to peel off this, like this. We have a bigger opening for the fan, HDMI, two USB-C ports, Ethernet port, this is for power and two USB-A ports, audio output. The cable, in fact, it's exactly like on the phones. One big logo. What do you need in order to use Mac Mini? Perfect, we are all set now. Let's dig more into it. I will not bother you with the first setup. I will just keep this part and show you other interesting stuff like how it runs and what you can do with it i have come on no are you done okay i still believe this lenovo is amazing you can attach it via hdmi or usb-c thunderbolt or whatever it's called I've connected this screen via USB-C and apart from the power, I have nothing else connected. External disk connected directly to the screen, USB hub here. And on this USB hub, I've connected the keyboard and the mouse via one cable. Amazing, right? There are some things which are very interesting. There are only two Thunderbolt ports and you would expect to have one Thunderbolt bus, but actually there are two. And this is very nice and very important. This means for each port you have separate 40 gigabits per second bus. Theoretically, you should have the same maximum speed, rating speed on each one of them. In comparison, this 16-inch uh, MacBook Pro has two ports here and two ports on the other side. However, it has two Thunderbolt buses which means one side is for one bus and the other side for the other bus. Regarding keyboard, you need to take this in consideration. If you do not buy a Mac keyboard, you have Alt, which is Option, you have Control, which is Control, and Win is Command. You see on Apple keyboard, you have Control, Option, Command, and here you have Control, Win, Alt, Alt, and win, they are in reverse. You'll have to take this in consideration and uh, you can use it as you normally do. Win H to hide. If you want to open another terminal, for example, win N and so on. What else I can show you? Oh yeah, do you know you can install Mac ports and uh, actually it works on M1 without any problems. If you are like me and you need a lot of tools, command line tools, MacPorts is very good. Docker has been upgraded for M1. On docker.com, if you go to get started, you'll see there is download for Mac Intel chip or for Apple chip. However, if you start Docker desktop, you will see that Docker still has some Intel processes. This means when Apple will decide to sunset Rosetta, this part of the Docker will not work, but I'm pretty sure they will upgrade it until then. So just for your knowledge, What's behind Docker, like the VM and drivers and everything, is built for ARM 
and Docker Desktop just this application is Intel. When you attempt to run an Intel based application for the first time, macOS will offer you to install Rosetta and you cannot bypass this. Without Rosetta, you will not be able to run any Intel based application. This happens only one time. Afterwards, any Intel based application will be executed without any notice. What's nice about Mac Mini on ARM is you can install iPhone or iPad applications. However, you need to take in consideration the fact that they are not verified for macOS and there are downsides, of course. For example, on this game, in order to move the car around, you would need to press with the mouse <laughs> on each button, left, right, acceleration, brake, whatever. So um, it's just for fun. Expect this when you want to install an application which is not verified for macOS. Expect to have this kind of uh, weird situation where you need multi-touch gestures. I have tested some games from Steam and Battle.net and the results are... Well, it depends on your expectations. Obviously, you are not able to play all games because for that you need Windows. Most games are made for Windows. You are basically stuck on games designed for Mac and not 32 bits version. I will show you right now. See, I'm selecting here Mac games, only those which can be installed. But if I deselect this, you will see this icon here. This is a game which was designed for Mac but it's 32-bit game, so will not work. There are a lot of games which were working before and now not because they need 32-bit support. Yeah, this is an old game for sure. It's working without any problems, but this is just an example of a Mac game. Ah, dead. Maybe some of you are interested to see what games you are able to play. So I'm showing you this. I'm still playing a lot of old games. I'm not limited only to brand new ones. So creepy. Oh, go away. Oh, I said go away. She went away. Okay. Mafia, it doesn't start at all. This is a specific thing for M1 probably because I've tested on my other MacBook and Mafia uh, runs there. Counter-Strike. You see, game developers who, who respect their customers are creating games for all platforms. This is how it should be. Uh, it's not that bad. 42 FPS. It's playable. Obviously, Tomb Raider is working without any problems because it was like a main attraction <laughs> when they presented our Max. One game that I was surprised is working and it's working quite nice is Metro Exodus. I'm in a pickle here, I was not able to get through. Oh, ugly. It's quite nice, the game. I have played it a little and I got no issues with it, no, no interruptions, no nothing, so it's working without any problems. Imagine how it works on M1 Max or Pro. Yeah, yeah, burn, burn, burn. Oh, what is that? Okay, enough with that. Diablo and Starcraft, they are working very nice. I haven't found any issues yet. I have played several hours without any, any problems. Also this one, so it's obviously uh, working very nice. It was made for Mac and uh, with Starcraft the same.
Look how fast it's loading. Done. Enough with games made, especially for Mac. Let me show you what you can do via Parallels. And you will see how fast Windows starts on this beautiful machine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and done. <laughs> nice, right? Unfortunately, the Abdullo Tour resurrected doesn't work on this Mac. Guys from Blizzard probably created a list of supported graphic uh, adapters and those who are not in that list are simply excluded. Unless I will be able to install Windows directly and try it, I cannot say for now if M1 is excluded or is just because of the parallels. I have installed some games. I will not be able to show them all to you, but I'm just scrolling down, so if you find in the list one of the games that is uh, in your interest, let me know and I will try to run it. For now, I'm just gonna show you a few of them that I have selected and we'll see. Crisis 2 Maximum Edition, this doesn't start at all. Doom gives you an error when it starts, so it's not working. New Colossus, come on, this is Windows. You see, expect this kind of situation when you are trying to, to launch games. It's not like on macOS. On macOS, if the game is not running, rarely, very rarely, you have a problem with the operating system itself. Here, I cannot do anything. Fortunately, Parallels included the virtual machine so nice in the operating system that I can stop applications directly from it. So I will do force quit of Doom and we'll see what is happening. No, so now it's okay. No, it's not okay. Let me stop Steam. You see, this is the problem with Windows. Whenever something is stuck, sometimes the entire operating system is stuck. So if you are testing games on Parallels, expect this kind of behavior. Quantum Break, it's running very slow. I have only 9, 10 FPS. Let's see if inside is different. No, I cannot play this game. I'm dying for sure. You see, this is the problem with virtualization because these games, I'm trying to run them in a virtual machine. So the virtual machine doesn't offer this kind of virtualization, doesn't offer you direct access to the GPU. So it's not fair for the processor to do this, but not having the possibility to install Windows directly. This is the only way I can do it. So if I will be able to run Windows directly on it and I will have all drivers for it, most probably the performance will be totally different. Okay, let's end this before I'm dying. Battlefield 5. Whoa, you see? This white thing. is playable but <laughs> when you shoot you have this white stuff which is not normal most probably because how the game interprets the graphics card provided by virtual graphic card provided by the parallels so avoid shotgun but as you can see I was able to, to kill them, so if you really want to play this game like this, you should be able to play it. Oops. Add Dead Redemption doesn't start at all. It's written, fail to initialize graphics device, please reboot or install latest driver. So for sure it doesn't detect whatever uh, Parallels is offering. Dirt is playable, as you can see. As you have seen, you can play some games via Parallels with M1 Mac Mini, but do not expect wow results. And my recommendation is do not buy Parallels if you have M1 Mac Mini and you want to play games. Probably if you have M1 Max or M1 Pro, but M1 Simple is not worth it. Mafia 3, 8 FPS, it's for sure unplayable. 
Anyway, the bottom line is a single processor does it all and it's amazing what it can do. As you have seen, some games can be played directly or via parallels and on top of that, it's almost cold on touch. Look at the CPU usage. Spikes, 75%, 58%, 57%. The fan, it's cruising at 1700 RPM. It's almost sitting there doing nothing. Amazing, right? I'm running a benchmark. I'm curious if you can hear any sounds. Let's see. Something? Nothing? No heat? No sound of any kind. A little flow on the back, but nothing serious. Okay, let's see. Compute. Metal. So I'll compute. Come on, give me something. No, really, you, you know what I want to do? I want to hit it so hard. This will be a challenge to hit the maximum fan speed on this Mega Mini. I ran about 450 yes commands in background via terminal and I was not able to hear the fan. Imagine that. So this CPU is quite resilient. It looks like if this CPU cannot do something or it does it too slow, it is not related to heat. That's about it for this video. I have much more to show with this small machine. I want to still test virtualization, development like Docker and some other tools that developers are using. I want to see if I can install Linux directly on it. And who knows, maybe also Windows directly on it. If you want to see something running on this, let me know and who knows, maybe I will do it. See you guys. Thumbs up if you liked it, subscribe and see you in the next one. Bye!